Hey, I'm Not So Ace Trainer, and welcome to the history of the Pokemon world. Let's get into it. This is part 3 of the series on the history of the Pokemon world. If you want to check out the other episodes, the links will be in the description. Remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next one. And now, let us begin. Millions of years had passed since the Pokemon world began to take shape and life began to evolve. The Mew population saw a huge decrease in its numbers, as more life began to sprout from its powers of evolution. At some point during this time, humans also come to be, though it isn't clear when it happened. It was an era dominated by creatures we now know as fossil Pokemon. While on the present they are some of the rarest Pokemon you can find, with some only being available through the revival feature, those species used to rule the world. Pokemon like Aerodactyl flew proudly through the skies. Others, like Tyrantrum, Tranidus and Amora, made a home out of the land. The primordial seas also bloomed with life, with Pokemon like Anorith, Omastar, Kabuto and Caracosta. It was also during these prehistoric times that the original form of Genesect lived, and while there are no certainties about its original biology, some have theorized that it might have been a close relative to Kabutox, though their difference in typing and habitat points out some flaws in that theory. But not only fossil Pokemon lived during these times. Some Pokemon, like Shellar and Relicanth, were also a part of the ancient fauna. Shellar was known to be the prey of Omastar, although we have no information if its form was the same as it is in modern times. And Relicanth is said to have remained unchanged for millions and millions of years. But the Pokemon world is not only about what lies above the surface, or within the deepest seas, but what's beneath the earth as well. It was millions of years ago that Carbink was formed out of the deep underground pressures and burning temperatures. This process would eventually lead to the birth of the mythical Pokemon Diancie. And so, as the years passed, life continued to evolve with other ancient Pokemon taking over the ones we know as fossils. Pokemon like Yammega, Mamoswine, Tangroth, Gastrodon and many others are born to take the place of those who used to rule the land. Some of them, like Mamoswine, would eventually see their populations dwindle as the climate changed. Then, we begin to see more events that would affect the main series of Pokemon games. 20,000 years ago, the first man-made Pokemon is created by an ancient civilization, that being Claydol. But that isn't the reason that time frame is remembered for, for that was when a meteorite fell into what would become the Gala region we know today. That meteorite would have a tremendous impact in the future, as it contained the legendary Pokemon Eternatus, which, as we all know, would eventually create a bit of a chaos. And so, as the prehistoric times of the Pokemon world came to an end, so would the worshipping of the world-shaping titans. The original Regigigas and those who helped him shape the Pokemon world are still in various places across various regions, and the titans it created, its keys, are also scattered, in order to prevent its awakening. This is the end of part 3, Explosion of Life. As you can see, the inconsistency start to show more as we deal with multiple legendaries like Regigigas, which were originally meant to be only one. It is for that reason that Pokemon Legends Arceus and its successors might really change the game when it comes to Pokemon lore. On the following episode, we will look at how the Pokemon world begins to swim in conflict, war and destruction. You can follow me on social media and Twitch, the links are all in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.